Hello. Oh my God. What the hell has happened to our country? Um, I'm going to wait for a few people to join in because I wasn't planning on going live until tomorrow. But so much has happened that I decided to go live today. Hey, surprise. Waiting for some people to join in before I start ranting. I I don't even know what the hell is going on in our country right now. Hey guys, hi Melissa. Oh my lord, I, I, I don't even know what to say right now. Um, I support my president, but I do not support what he did today. Oh no. I had a uh, Zoom video chat with some folks the other night. And this hydroxychloroquine situation did come up because when the drug first started getting talked about, um, it created a shortage for people who actually needed it. And it was very scary. Um, the, the woman's daughter has, I believe, lupus, and uh, she couldn't get her med. And now, now my fine president um, had to open his lips today there are times where we uh, don't need to talk. Oh, I'm well rested. I'm going to be finding a new position out here. Um, ended my contract, and I'll talk about that soon. Um, but uh, there is no good study with this drug. The only one that went to a randomized controlled trial was the remdesivir. Um there's no mention of zinc when they had talked about, let's see, I'm going back to my notes from the one day. Um, let's see here. No men, which study? Oh, on uptodate.com. Um, they're not giving it routinely, given a lack of clear benefit from limited data and potential toxicity. And there is no mention in that article, and uptodate.com is a good website to go get good information. Um, there was a total of five days with no mention of zinc and does not even recommend the Z-Pack. So he's up there today. I think he said he was taking it for like a week and a half, like 10 days now. The recommended is five days. WTF. So now we're going to have a bunch of Dr. Google people back at their freaking physician's office wanting to get a drug that was already hard to get the first damn time for people who needed it. And you're going to have to bear with any of my notifications. I'm waiting on Uber Eats. Yeah, it's on the way. Hang on a sec. Sorry, Uber Eats. I'm waiting on food, but I wanted to go live sooner. Um, but now we're going to have a drug shortage again. Oh, I will see PTSD being a problem for healthcare workers. Um, sorry, I, until Uber gets here, I got to leave the notifications on. Um, dear God, I, I, yeah, two weeks and he's fine. Well, it's not a prophylactic treatment. That means it's not preventative. Um, it can cause heart arrhythmias. And in every single patient that I've had in the hospital who was it was given to, they're still either non-responsive or they're dead. So I can't even, I, I, I really, I have no good things to say about that freaking announcement other than you probably should have not said that on the national news. Um, in the VA retrospective study, over age of the 65, deaths were 28% higher with hydroxychloroquine alone, followed by 22%, which included the Z-Pack. And then the people who didn't take it was only 11%. So looking at those numbers, does it sound like it's a great freaking idea to just prophylactically just go take hydroxychloroquine because um, why? There's no clinical benefit that we have found. There's no control groups. Um, we never got the data from China. Big surprise! 
The only thing we got from China was the freaking coronavirus. Um, the Shanghai study showed it didn't make a difference in recovery. They need a larger study to confirm the results. The study in France tried to duplicate the Shanghai study, and the groups who received the meds had similar, similar results with or without the combination of those meds. So please tell me why you just got your freaking ass up on national news and just got the country all revved up over a drug we just got over a shortage of. Please tell me why. Uh, the last I checked, um, you needed to submit to the FDA for compassionate use. Um, its best use is within trials if possible. Um, there is no randomized controlled trial. I, I, I just can't freaking even believe it. When I got sent the message about this, I was like, hmm, let's check the sources. And I just happened to turn the TV on and seen this shit. Um, it's not a miracle drug, folks. We do not need to be taking it prophylactically. There are heart arrhythmias that can be caused. Um, not recommended. It is not. Please do not go pester your doctors for this drug. Save it for the people who need it. And even with the remdesivir, it only improved outcomes like 30% maybe. It was only like th improved it by like three days. And it's a very small, that's why there's a randomized controlled trial because it's really small. Um, the p-values that I talked about, you know, it showed that there was a significance to stop giving the placebo and give everybody the drug because there was enough of a... Um, results that the recovery it was 11 days versus 15 days so and the mortality went from eight or from 11.6 to eight you know so there's not a huge big difference with the remdesivir and they're adding an anti-inflammatory agent along with it in this next phase of the trial that they're doing so please please do not go freaking beg your doctor for this drug don't 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 it, there is no good data, and you have to look at the studies. <laughs> science the crap out of it, and they're trying to, and all the science that we have says yes, and it's all about yes. Dear God, I'm, be, I'm beginning to wonder if this man has stock in the freaking drug. Um, I don't support everything Trump does. I do not, and I do not support this. Um I did end my contract at the facility that I was at. Um, there was some major PPE shortages and some major patient safety issues that I have a problem with that I'm currently notating to report. Because if one thing that this girl was taught by the awesome respiratory therapist that trained her at Hurley Medical Center is that if you don't document it, it didn't happen. But this is the PPE and isolation guidelines. Remember that cheap plastic gown? Hang on. Let me find it. Let me just grab the whole damn bag of PPE. Oh, here it is. I wrapped it up. So, I got to work last week, and we were getting nice sterile surgical gowns to use in and out of rooms. We didn't have the yellow isolation gowns to give, which is what would have been appropriate to give us if they didn't have the correct PPE. But this cheap-ass, tiny little gown is what I'm supposed to make use. I mean, I can see through it. I mean, there's light. Um, these are meant to rip away from you if you don't, you know, you tie it up and you pull it away <laughs> to take it off. Um, this is what we were given last week, and I had to fight for three days to even get a sterile gown. We were told we don't have them. What's going on is um, elective surgeries are going to open back up so they don't want to tear open all their kits anymore to give us the PPE that we needed. So this is the hospital's PPE and isolation guidelines. And in an airborne negative pressure room with a patient who's on airborne and contact precautions, which all the COVID patients are, N95, eye protection, gloves, and a disposable isolation gown. That's that blue thing I showed you. Disposable not to be wiped down and used for a 12 and a half hour shift. Wear an isolation gown for any of the high risk patient care activities, performing or present or a present for any aerosol generating procedures. When you're on a ventilator, a BiPAP, 
high flow cannula, any that's considered aerosol generating. You discard, this is highlighted, you discard the isolation gown after performing any of these activities. Um, the plastic eyeglasses that I was using instead of the face shield, you're supposed to discard the plastic lens after each single use. You want to know what we didn't have any more of? Those individual lenses. So I had to buy my own goggles to wipe down. The face shield fogs up. You can't see through it. When you try to clean it, it scratches because the plastic is so cheap and not meant to be used that way. Our N95 mask, according to the hospital policy, may be worn for one shift by a single wearer. That's in bold print. The N95 may be worn with a face shield, preferred, or a surgical mask on the end. Change surgical mask between patients, and you wear it for one shift, not multiple. And thank you guys for sending me the PPE that you did. I will be picking up another contract while I'm out here, because I'm already out here. But you discard the N95 masks following use during aerosol-generating procedures, which means after I'm in the face of a patient with COVID on a ventilator, or unplugging the vent to change a filter, which generates aerosol possible because you're opening up a vent circuit, it's going to spray, it should be thrown away. Discard N95 respirators following close contact with or exit from the care of any patient co-infected with an infectious disease on contact precautions. I mean, this is ridiculous. My hospital in El Paso, what they were doing to make sure we had enough PPE, because they planned ahead. UMC, you rock. They planned ahead. They wanted to make sure that the healthcare workers didn't run out of their PPE. So the ones that we could properly sterilize, we were not to throw them away. We were to save them so they could sterilize those N95 masks. I went to get a ventilator out of a patient's room the other day that had a patient discharged down to the floor. That's my guy who wound up back on a ventilator a few days later. Um, and the vent was still in the room, but the room was clean. You wanna talk about cross-contamination? So I went to the charge nurse who was really awesome. My nursing staff there was great. Um, very on top of things, but just everybody's frustrated. And she called housekeeping. I pulled the vent out, wiped the vent down, bagged it, labeled it COVID, and took it downstairs immediately. And they came back in and wiped down the floor. Never mind the wall panel or anything. I have worked in many hood hospitals. That's where I love to work. I love the patient population. We have these little machines, the UV lights, that they bring into the room to zap everything. And they do a damn good job. And this place had nothing. They're not even wiping down the ICU monitors, not the remote controls, nothing, nothing, nothing. Don't think I haven't written this down. I am filing a complaint with the Joint Commission. What they tried to do today was retaliate. But because this girl documents, my behind is covered. Theirs is not because I've documented everything regarding my patient, Vent alarms turned up double so people don't have to go into the room. These are all safety issues. Jeopardizing patient and employee safety is not okay. And no, I don't care what dollar amount that you're paying me. It will not keep me quiet about safety issues. Those are in place for the occupational health of the people working in that building and also for the safety of the patients in it. The patient that I fought not to be intubated last week, before he was moved into that room, there was an orange, I think it's the KOF, I'm not sure what the name of it is. It's orange. It looks like Kool-Aid syrup, but it was all over the headboard from the previous patient. Like they had a spill and I pointed it out to the housekeeper and I said that this needs to be cleaned. And sure enough, when we went to intubate the patient, or move the intubated patient after all this happened, it was still all over the freaking bed. I mean, it was quite evident that it was everywhere and it needed to be wiped down. That's terrible. It was visible, visible soiled. So if you can see that, 
What the hell is going on along the rest of those hospital rooms? Do I have people being co-infected with COVID who aren't there for that actual reason? Are you causing patients to get sick with this behavior? I'm not okay with this. Not okay. And I did get a hold of my recruiter Friday when I got there and seen this cheap-ass plastic gown. I was done. I was done. I let her know. And there was some other issues that I will address um, at a different time. But I am going to be picking up a different contract because I did nothing wrong. And I document everything that happens. And it's all documented very, very clearly. And before people start making accusations, they should probably go check charts. Nobody reads the chart notes anymore or the charts. And that's really important to do every time you have a patient because you need to see the updates. So I'm not going to put up with that. I don't care what money that you're lining my pockets with. I will go work somewhere else that does care. I'm seeing videos from nurses on the front lines with 10 times more PPE than I have. Um, and once again, thank you guys very, very much because you probably helped save my life because the employer wasn't looking out for us and my uh, agency recruiter was not impressed with what I've had to say. And I've already got two pages of notes um, and I'm not done. I have to go back through all of my notes because I scribble things down and then I stuff it in my bag. So I've had to pull things out. But it's all dated. I just have to organize it all. But um, so, yeah, I'm going to be switching hospitals. Thank God. Thank God. Um, not professional, not safe for anybody. Um, when you're wearing the sterile gown that we're supposed to leave up in the unit into the department and leaving it into an area where people are coming in to see a doctor later on, you are leaving COVID all over the chair. You're bringing it into the break room where we're eating. Um, all of these lovely things. And I don't care how much they put signs up all over the building. If you're not enforcing infection control, people get lazy. And it's not worth the money. Your life is not worth a dollar sign. And I, I have no idea what to think about... Um, Oh, an epidemiologist says YouTube removed his anti-lockdown video for violating community standards. So we had a protest out here today in Jersey. It was very peaceful. It was very respectful at a gym. And I think these guys had it done right. Um, they were concerned about everybody's health and safety. And But we need to get back to work. People need to get out of the freaking house because they're going to kill each other next. Um, they're going to start eating their young and things like that, because we just can't deal with kids trapped in the house anymore. Kids need to be outside playing and doing kid things responsibly. However, let me see if this is Uber. Hang on. I, nope. Um, but we need to be wearing masks and socially distancing. We cannot be out running amok um, not wearing masks during all of this, because this virus is still here. Taiwan did it right. They were able to send their kids to school. We all went to, they all went to work. They socially distanced and they had seven deaths out of 28 million people. I cannot stress enough. It's time for you all to get along and unite and do this shit right and do it together. Do it like they did it in Jersey because the cops showed up. They sent the state police because that's who the governor, you know, that's who they, they answer to. They showed up and politely informed them that they were in violation of the order and then told them, have a good day. And the crowd cheered. That didn't happen in Michigan. They weren't toting guns around out here. They weren't acting ignorant. They weren't hanging the governor by a noose off the American flag. They just want to go back to work. And it was peaceful, civil disobedience. Most people in the crowd probably should have been wearing a freaking mask because they were standing too close anyway. But you weren't allowed in the building unless you were wearing a mask. You had to maintain your social distance. You were limited to an hour and 15 minutes in the building. And they did it right. And that's a responsible business owner. 
Walmart letting people wear gloves all over the damn place and letting people in without wearing masks and not maintaining social distance, not responsible. Um, if we can get this right, we can contain the spread, but apparently we're too spoiled and I'm going to have a job for a while. So this break is a little nice because I freaking needed it. Um, I'm not going to put up with compromised patient safety. In, in, in these type of situations, that is very uncalled for. I don't care what your excuse is. You're not even cleaning a hospital room. You're just wiping down the mattress and mopping a floor. Um, that's not okay. And any healthcare worker who hears this is going to tell you that's not okay. Um, let me go back through comments here. I've been talking for a minute. Um... I do support Trump, John, but I don't support what he said today. Um, right now, we're getting America wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, if anything, we need a leader who's going to be up here talking about getting along and doing this shit right and maintaining some form of our sanity and keeping social distance and following those guidelines, but still getting back to our lives. Um See, waiting on COVID testing. President began taking it to, yeah, I've seen that one. Carrie, there's no good alternative right now. I don't need somebody with pre-Alzheimer's conditions and dementia to become president because then they're going to be declared unfit. Um, right now, we need to consider 2024 and start really looking at how we vote and who we think would represent us as the American people once the shit show is over. This is a dumpster fire. This is a flaming freaking dumpster fire right now. This is, I, I damn it. I have no idea why he would take it if he's not tested positive. I cannot believe he's, yeah, he's got to have stock because... There is no reason to continue to promote this drug, and the remdesivir is the one that went to the clinical trials. Um, that's the drug we should be looking at, not running people out of an anti-malaria drug and one that they take on a regular basis and can't get their hands on for their regular care because we can't get him to shut up about it. Does, doesn't that put the WH doc in danger of prescription? No, no. Fauci's already said that this is not, not good. And you see how he's treating Fauci now. So I uh, freaking don't even, what the hell? Man, what the hell? I don't think he was exposed. I think he's scared he was because there's a bunch of White House staff that have tested positive. Um... No, months ago, the U.S. did not purchase millions of pills. We had no idea that this was coming. Let's stop with the fucking conspiracy theories. I'm not going to deal with those. That's just contributing to more American problems. Ay, ay, ay. Yep, CYA, Emily, cover your ass. You always do that in healthcare. I don't care how long it takes me to document. Everything I do and find is documented. It's documented thoroughly. Um, oh, the another one was the Sharps container. Um, overfilled with needles sticking out of the top in a patient's room. That's that's great. There's a fill line about like that far from the top of that container that's supposed to be checked every day by the housekeepers who don't clean. And uh, yeah, pictures of that. My endotracheal tube fastener, which the manufacturer recommends changing after five days, in which my facility that I left in El Paso re requires after three, um, was on a patient for 17 days. See, they weren't dating anything either. When you put stuff like that on a patient, you have to date it and put your initials on it and the time. And none of that was done uh, except for by the person who put it on. So when I had the patient again and I checked the date and seen it was put on on April 20th and 17 days later, it was still on my patient's face. I had a problem with that. All documented. Um, 
the, uh, why does this keep shutting down? Ay, ay, ay. Um, yeah, so things like that are not safe and it's not okay. People, it's very peopley out there right now. Oh, you know, I was, I firmly believe that I was put in this position to speak up. And this has been, I hope you, the microphone is working. I'm trying to figure out why this damn phone won't turn on. Um, trying to do my Uber Eats through this one. Uh, I firmly believe that I was put out here to see this and to speak up because these are people who normally can't speak up for themselves. They're poor, uninsured, and this is my favorite patient population. I love my homeless people. I love my old veterans who are grumpier than shit. Um, I do, I do, I do. So I do not appreciate patient safety being compromised. You know, is it because they're of this class? Is it, you know, is, is that how they're looking at my patients is my question. Um, are they getting the, you know, a proper care or does, do they just not care? Um, I will not stay quiet. There are facilities out here doing this right. There are. Um, the administration is who's to blame and they need to have quality measures in place like most facilities do. Um, checking these things and making sure that the employees are doing what they need to be doing. Um, I do not believe that this is going on everywhere. I have no reason to believe that. Um, my facility in Texas was doing a really good job um, at infection control and prevention. Um, every I have, In my 11 years of doing this, this is my first experience to this extreme. Um, so this, I believe, is an isolated incident. You know, I don't believe that they're murdering people. No. But I do believe that there is a certain standard of care that needs to be met, no matter who your patient is. And that's basic human decency. And we have a moral obligation to not spread COVID everywhere for the rest of our coworkers and other patients to pick up who don't actually have it. Because there are patients on the floor who are not COVID positive and they don't need to contract it because of a lazy, most healthcare infections that you get in the hospital are caused by people not washing their damn hands or wearing their PPE all over the freaking hospital and uh, not, not being mindful of what's going on. All right, we're gonna walk downstairs in the lobby and I'm gonna put my face mask on, which only goes with me down to the lobby. So it's really not dirty except for my breath. So we're gonna go uh, go for a walk. But we, um, we have an obligation to our patients and to ourselves and coworkers to keep people safe. And that is one of those things that needs to happen. And I'm not going to uh, stay silent about that. Um, Z Dog MD, he is one who speaks up about this, and you know he had uh, he had uh, called us all on the carpet, and you know we 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 have a responsibility here, and he is correct. Uh, let's see here, zero minutes away, he'll be calling me, so if I disconnect, I'll come back. But um, this is this is a terrible situation to be in here. Okay, yeah, the best place to not be in the, is in the hospital right now. Um, I, and I don't like, yeah, I'm in New Jersey, and I'm going to probably stay here because I'm already here. It's just easier to move around that way. There's other hospitals around here who are still looking for people, so I'll find out more tomorrow. Um, people, yeah, people are protesting in Michigan, like, out of complete ignorance right now. They're not even protesting for the reasons they should be. COVID isn't a Second Amendment right. What you should be protesting for is better health care. Um, holding people responsible for their actions. This is just not, not the America that we were raised in.
Um, I don't even know what to think right now. I'm not upset that I changed, that I'll be changing contracts. I'm actually very, very relieved because, you know, I'm working days and night shift. I'm sleep deprived, which compromises my immune system. And I don't need to contract this. And I also need the PPE to do my damn job. Hang on. For Misty? Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. It is the first driver that found his way to the hotel without me having to give directions. He's going to get an extra tip. Um, apparently, trying to find a gigantic hotel that's 10 stories is really hard to do here. Well, this is a lot of food, and I ordered a small one. But, um, yeah, so this is what's going on. If you're going to protest, let's protest for the right reasons. And healthcare change needs to be one of them. Um, 50% of our gross domestic product goes towards health care costs of some way, shape, or form, whether it be to pay for us or pay for your insurance. So that needs to change. They're talking crazy, I mean, all over the news about health care costs, health care costs, health care costs. You want to protest something? Protest that. Because this is controllable. When you demand change and reform, in the areas that are actually necessary. The cost savings is going to, oh my God, the things that we could do with healthcare right now, um, the change in the telehealth medicine is, go, it, we really need to go to telehealth for a lot of things because it will prevent a lot of patients. There are many people who do not want to go to a hospital or a doctor's office when they're sick and they can be treated from home people I mean I cannot tell you how many ER visits we see for people complaining of a damn cough do you know how much drain that is on the healthcare system to treat people for a cough in the emergency room this could have been dealt with elsewhere um, telehealth medicine would be great for certain types of urgent care visits and hang on plugging the phone back in now I can turn off my notifications thank you guys for your patience I'm just a little hungry. Um, so protesting can be a good thing when done properly. It is okay to not agree with your government. It is completely okay. Do it right. But do it for the right reasons. Uh, showing up on the Capitol steps with weapons um, is probably not the best impact or a noose with the governor hanging from it. That's not the message that we're trying to send. What that sends is a threatening message. And peaceful civil disobedience goes a lot farther than armed protests. Armed protests are only going to serve one purpose, and that's to incite violence and fear. And suppress another side's ability to have their opinion and their freedom to criticize the government. Please, please tell the families if they have issues with medical facilities that carries to contact the ombudsman. The problem is these families don't know about it because guess who's not in the hospital? The families. And I would be violating HIPAA if I were to pick up the phone and call them. Um, but definitely if they do encounter problems, the ombudsman for the state, um, yes. Yes, 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 yes. It really sucks that the families are not there because with these patients being on ventilators, they can't advocate for themselves. They're on ventilators and everything is done over the phone and they don't physically see anything. And that makes it really hard to know what your loved one is going through when you can't see them. Um, this, this is a really crappy situation to be in and I need to grab a bowl. Um, ugh. things are never easy here. I had no intention of doing this tonight. Sorry, kind of an impromptu session because I had not planned on any of this, but having the night off is great. I, I needed it. My body is just exhausted. Um, I don't need to be sick, but, uh, 
not having the families there is a really negative thing right now because they are the patient's advocate. They are there to make medical decisions when that patient cannot and when they can't see their loved one and see the filth on the side of the bed and speak up about it and say something about it. You know, I try to, I do try. Oh God, did I try. But it just seemed to get brushed, you know, and I even brought it up directly to the environmental services worker. And they just, I honestly think that they work in a system that is so broken that they just don't give a crap about their job anymore. And that is a problem with administration. Morale, that comes from administration supporting their employees. So if somebody is acting like that and you're seeing it throughout the hospital, that's an administrative issue. It's not an employee issue. And I fault the administration for that. Oh, you guys are so sweet. At least for the reports going around, who knows what's true up there. It's so hard. I have no idea either, Gail. I was like, the reason I voted for Trump, I keep getting fucking messages asking me why. The reason I voted for him is because I'm an avid military supporter and what the hell was going on overseas and in North Korea at the time required him. There's no way I was gonna send a woman who left people to die in Benghazi to do that job. It's just, no. That's my reasoning right there. He had the balls to do what needed to be done. Yeah, somebody needs to get him a ball gag right now and pull him off the stage with a cane because he needs to quit talking. I'm sorry. I cannot even condone what he's saying right now. Not at all, not at all, not at all. No. Please make no mistakes that hydroxychloroquine is not a miracle drug. It is not. There is no magical cure for this virus. If there was, we wouldn't be told to stay the hell at home. Oh my God, I just, and then for 10 days when it's recommended that you take it for five, um, not even what it's recommended for. Please leave that medication for the people who actually need it for their medical conditions because they are experiencing a shortage because he won't shut the hell up, nor will the news media. I really hope that the media just shuts up. I just don't even talk about it. Don't even get this in people's heads that they need to go out and ask their doctor for it because it's not going to solve the problem right now. Oh my God. I wish the nurses would take the time to chart right. If it takes away... Unfortunately, we have to spend more damn time with a computer than we do with our patients. And that's another thing that Z-Dog preaches and it's true. But I will take the extra time because it's, it's, it came back to bite me early on in my career when I was at Hurley. And that's when my RTs were like, make sure that you document this way. And it was early in the days of electronic charting because when I started my career, we were still paper charting. So they had taught me the way to document in order to cover my behind. And ever since then, I've always been able to do it. So if you don't document it, it doesn't happen. If I go into a patient's room and I find my high pressure alarm way above its setting, I document, found peak pressure alarm at 75, which most RTs know that's way too effing high, um, which I found on just about every ventilator patient every shift. Notified the director too, nothing done. Oh my, yeah, I seen that doctor and preaching around with her freaking microphone. I, yep, I've seen it. Um, th that is totally unacceptable. And the text, I'm going to tell you what right now, the Texas medical board is nobody to screw with. It took me eight months to get my damn license down there. They investigate everything. Complaints, they're very thorough and they will drag it out. Um, these doctors who are walking around promoting all of this really need to be careful because if somebody files a complaint because they got their hands on it or they took their relative's medication because 
some doctor on Facebook was saying how great it was. Guess whose ass is in trouble? Yep, comes in handy to be three steps ahead. It came in handy to be three steps ahead of my ex-husband, too. I covered my ass with that one, too, because I could see where this was going by his behavior patterns. That's why my ass is in the free and clear, and I still have a medical license. Yeah, see, Jana, my trach patients. The RTs are not even going in the room at the hospital. They're charting and documenting things that they didn't physically look at. Because if they did, they would know that the patient wasn't in that condition because that's not how I found them. My nurses are doing trait care. Now, it is part of the scope of practice for the ICU nurse to do trait care, but it's also that of the respiratory therapist. It is the airway. Um, don't you dare skip out on trait care at any of the other facilities I've ever been at. Oh, no. Nope. They go around and check. Um, UMC was great about making sure we were doing our trait care. And I never chart something that I don't do because the minute you do, your ass is grass. It's going to be the one thing that they find that you didn't do. Um, it's karma. So you just do it. It doesn't take but like three minutes. It's really not that hard. Um, I date everything and even the nurses were really happy. Or oral care. My patients had skin peeling off their lips because oral care wasn't being done. Every facility I've been at, we've rotated oral care with the RNs. They couldn't believe I was doing it. Um, when my patient has skin peeling off their tongue, I got a problem with that. When I don't have the equipment to clean their mouth, I got a problem with that. Hey, Sean. Yeah, it, yeah, it's very sad. Um, Kelly, we just need to keep... Speaking up, write notes, Jayco, 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 because here's the thing. When they do finally catch up, they can go back in those patients' charts and see. Um, if things aren't being done safely and properly, the authority that does have the ability to go back and look at those charts is the Joint Commission. And if anything is changed and deleted out of those charts, it will be logged. Um, always advocate for your patients. Always call corporate compliance. Um, that's what they're there for. I highly recommend it because I'm going to be making a phone call myself. Um, I'm absolutely disgusted. These people should be ashamed. This is not how you treat people, employees, or patients. What government needs to do to help out with health care? We need health care reform. We need leaders who are going to push for health care reform. The power of patient care needs to be taken out of the hands of insurance companies. I mean, you can't even, it's like Z-Dog said on a video that he did for the graduating class of the medical school for 2020 or COVID-19, um, is that you can't even get a price for what it costs you for an appendectomy. I mean, you have no idea because it's caught up in price wars with insurance. It's like all hidden and shrouded. There's not a, if you wanna to try to see transparency and these uh, prices, there's a website, but it's so hard to understand that you can't figure out what the hell you're even looking at. It's, it, it's completely different. It's a negotiated price with the insurance company and the hospital. It's a big secret between competitors that needs to go, go. That's like health 1.0 as he calls it. Um, it's old school and you cannot be paying for a performance for a, a procedures. It should be like in a Medicare Advantage plan. You're given this much money to manage a patient's care with these medical conditions. Do it responsibly. And if you do it right, you have extra money. If you do it wrong, then you're taking a loss. Um, that's what needs to happen because you need to treat the person as a whole. If you treat the person as a whole, then you don't usually have all these other problems going on. Um, but we're very limited with what we can do right now. And using telehealth medicine is one of the major things that we need to start being able to do. Thank you. 
Sargon. Yeah. I have human compassion. Um, I really do. I put people above a paycheck. I don't care how much I'm making. As long as my bills are paid, I try to pay it forward and give to other people. And that reminds me, the Flow Nightingale, uh, a, a Flow's Whistle. I shared that. Please share the hell out of that page. What this individual has done, it's anonymous, um, is it allows us healthcare workers once per shift to log in and let them know if we have PPE. And then it will log it by like a congressional district. So then we have data to take to our leaders and go, hey, this needs to change. This is real accurate, real time information from our frontline workers and we don't have the shit that we need. Please share it. I did pay to boost the post on my page to put it in the face of more healthcare workers. People have gotten lax. People have gotten very lax. They've gotten comfortable. And that's where mistakes are made. Um, even the healthcare workers have gotten comfortable with COVID. There's no comfort with COVID. It's hot and sweaty and miserable. You shouldn't be walking all over the hospital with your PPE on from a unit full of COVID um, and possibly infecting your coworkers. And people are just lazy, naturally. You know, and if they're not going to do their job, there is somebody else out there right now who wants it. So do your job right or get the hell out of healthcare. We don't need you. I have learned talking gets nowhere. It's sad or D-O-N doesn't really give a crap. Residents in my healthcare center are so neglected due to cut down on staff. See, that's not okay. I would be calling the state. If you're in a nursing home, definitely call the state because these are the problems right now and we're having high infection rates in nursing homes. And I don't think that it's the D-O-N doesn't care. It's the administration above her doesn't care. She's probably complained for you. And administration is doing nothing and she's just exhausted herself and beat down. It's all about perspective. I know it seems that way from your angle, but I guarantee you she more than likely has brought this up and she has gotten nothing. You know, Kelly, I don't see the nursing staff avoiding the patient rooms. I mean, we're not supposed to go in there as much, but... I don't see the staff um, avoiding going in. They're, they are taking care of their patients to the best of their ability. So am I. Um, I think part of the problem with the respiratory therapy department where I was at is that they're not respected, especially by the medical director who makes up things about people in order to cover his own ass. Too bad I covered mine. Um, but we're just button pushers there. Our views, our knowledge, and what we do is not respected. And if you don't have a leader that respects what you do, every hospital I've ever been at, your ass better be at bedside report for rounds. When the physician rounds with everybody, you got a pharmacist there, you have the nursing staff there, your respiratory therapist is there, physical therapy, the whole team is at the bedside for rounds. You know who's at the rounds at this hospital? This asshole attending doctor preaching and talking down to his residents who are in so much fear of treating their patients because of how they're treated. Um, and they're afraid of getting yelled at. And honestly, they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. So it doesn't matter what they do, they're wrong, which is not the way to teach people. Um, you don't incite fear in order to impart knowledge and wisdom. And that, that's not a good tactic. That's not a leader. That's somebody who needs to go. Um, and I feel bad because they're getting ripped out of an education. So before I left, I gave them the education that they needed to understand exactly the condition that I was talking about that is coming right out of New York City, right over the bridge. Um, if you can't educate yourself with that material that's coming from 30 minutes away because your arrogance is getting in the way, then that's a problem with patient care as well because it's affecting your patients negatively. But everybody should be at bedside rounds, not somebody on their podium with all their minions preaching. Mm -mm. We are all a part of this team and the respiratory therapists are just so disrespected that they don't, they don't give a shit about their job. 
and then that in turn affects patient care. That's once again a reflection of the leader, poor leadership, and that needs to out the window, out the window. And that is what we need to, not only voting in um, an election, but also who we vote for union representatives who represent the nurses union, the respiratory therapists, all these people, you need to pay attention who's representing you. And you need to represent yourself when you don't have that kind of representation. You need to speak up. And honestly, if you're afraid of losing your job, there are a men, million other hospitals out there who would be more than happy to have somebody who gives a crap about the patient. Um, it's a high turnover job. It's a high burnout industry. And we do need good people here. You know, I, I don't have any concerns because my level of care that I give, I mean, this place did not meet my expectations of what I would expect a good facility to do. Every facility that I have been at has, out in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, there are two therapists staffed at Central Michigan, McLaren Central Michigan. Those two therapists have more knowledge, you know, than anybody I know because they are covering high-risk deliveries, they are covering ICU, they are covering the emergency room. They know their crap, they're on top of it, and they were great therapists. Um, two people per shift for the whole hospital. Um, if they can do it and have, you know, they're not sleeping on the job. That was another problem. People were downstairs sleeping in the department all night long. That's dereliction of duty. I'm not okay with that because I'm the one upstairs taking care of their patients. When the doctor, we had a ventilator quit the other night, Friday night, I come down finally to take my break to eat and pee. And they're calling up overhead for respiratory ASAP. And I see the door crack open and some sleepy eyes and take three or four minutes to get to the phone. Well, that emergency was one of the ventilators had stopped running. Sure that, you know, that the people who had to bag a patient because our vent quit running with COVID, where we're not supposed to be bagging a patient, really appreciated being exposed to COVID because somebody was sleeping on the job. Sorry, I just say it the way it is. April 5th. Well, if they had, there's no way we knew ahead of time about hydroxychloroquine. I'm sorry. Um, we do use that drug. It's an anti-malaria drug. We do use it for our military. You do know that, right? Um, jungle warfare. We still have soldiers who train there. That's what my husband did. I think he's taken every anti-malaria drug on the market and then some that have been pulled off. So, just because the coincidence of that article and that date, you think that you know what you're talking about, that does not mean that that's what all those drugs were for. So please stop with the damn conspiracies because they do use it in the military. Seems like the housekeepers are not comfortable. The thing is, you know, I'll clean the freaking room. Just give me the damn stuff. And if you're scared to do your job, there is an objection form that you can fill out and go home. I mean, all of us are scared. Every one of us are scared to be in there doing our jobs, but we're doing it. And if you're safe about it and people do their job and maintain infection control, we wouldn't have to be so scared. No protocol. Yep, the protocol is not being followed. There's a reason protocols are in place. It's not because your leaders are trying to be jerks. It's for safety, and it's because they've scienced the crap out of it and know that those protocols work. So if you think that you can do their job better, go apply. Didn't have insurance for a long time. Anytime I go to the hospital, they would do nothing for me. Now I have insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're going to bill you for anything they possibly can. And that that's not how you do patient care. That's not, and it's ridiculous. They're gonna do as minimal as possible for people who don't have insurance. And I've seen things, you know, I had a patient come in for alcoholic metabolic encephalopathy, which is high ammonia levels. They get a little goofy, rule out COVID. Patient came in with sepsis, rule out COVID. 
There were no signs of COVID. There were no inflammatory markers in the blood. There was no reason to rule out COVID. None of that. So there is an abuse of the healthcare system and that also needs to stop because that is insurance fraud. Homeless guy, no family, go figure. You can't hardly get any hydroxychloroquine brandy. Because I know that the lady I was talking to, I believe she was from, uh... no, universal health care is not the answer. It's fixing a broken system. We can't have good universal health care until we fix the broken system that we already have, or we're just going to have a bigger financial drain. Um, we have to be able to allow doctors to treat their patients as they see fit and not as hospital administration says that you need to do so many hip procedures. There's no reason that your 90 year old grandpa who can't really get up, move around needs a brand new hip. You're just gonna put him at more risk for acquiring hospital infections, pneumonia, cause he can't get his ass up out of bed now and rehab ain't gonna help. He was fine where he was at. And unless that, this is a numbers thing. This all needs to change. They are doing so many unnecessary procedures because hospital administrators do not have to have a medical degree to run a hospital. They just have to have a business degree. That doesn't mean they know a damn thing about medical. People were protesting because they were want highlights and a haircut. Okay, so up in Maryland, there was a lady who left her three-month-old and three-year-old in the car for an hour. Cops had to bust the window out. Um... Barber here in New York was giving out haircuts illegally. Uh, he was COVID positive for three weeks, infected how many people? Um, there was another nail salon owner who tested positive. So if we're not going to be careful with how we treat people, then we shouldn't be treating people at all. Um, I don't know where they got them from, Lynn. Um, they, I think, were from a personal stash that people had. Um, some people had some of the N95s from Home Depot. I do have a stash, and I'm sure that my next facility that I go to will be a little bit more appropriate. And I highly doubt, after this experience, that my travel agency will work with this hospital again. They're pretty disgusted. Yeah, being able to call and email your doctor is a lot, it's really convenient for them too because they can answer you in between seeing patients who actually need to be seen in the office. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Yes, yes, yes. And be civil. Correct, Madeline. Be civil. Even in the face of people being negative, just be kind. Just be kind. The guy who did that with the noose is running for office. Now, what office? What the? He doesn't even have any teeth. He looks like a meth head from a trailer park that got shut down in Flint three years ago. Oh, my God. And people wonder why I don't come home to Michigan. Oh, my God. Yes, it's sweet and sour chicken. Honey... At this point in time, I have probably eaten COVID more times than I am. I'm not even concerned at this point. I'm not. I just got out of the shower prior to starting my video, and it's a cardboard container. I, I just, I'm good. Yes, it is sweet and sour chicken, though. But that mask only went over my face to walk outside one other time, and I grab it by the straps. So I'm not, not even worried. I have a whole box of masks. Thanks to Marissa. Well, it's better than eating crab legs. I had crab legs last time. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, I was craving sweet and sour tonight. Um, there's, there's some more things that are open, but I get really tired of eating the same. I, I really wish I could cook for myself. Um... If a facility that I go to is a little bit farther away, I'll probably get an Airbnb or a suite just so I can cook. Must be within an ER, but when they put him in the ICU, yeah, you couldn't be. What did he say today? Yeah, it is not a miracle drug. 
Not at all, not at all, not at all. I will, Carrie. I've seen the link. Hey, Heather. You won't do takeout. Okay, all we have is a choice of takeout here. You don't have any way else to eat your food um, or get food because you're in a hotel and there's no way to cook. So that's all we're doing. And these folks are small businesses too who do need our support. Um, we're probably keeping them open right now as healthcare workers because we need to eat. So sorry if, you know, but they're, they really are going through a lot of extra measures to stay safe and to be sanitary and clean. And there's really no reason to avoid takeout. There, there isn't, um, if that was the case, we'd have a whole hotel full of very, very, very sick healthcare workers. Don't avoid your small business owners who really need your support right now for doing takeout. Um, it's probably what's keeping their doors open right now because there's a lot of shuttered restaurants here. A lot. And I really wish they'd reopen because there's some that I would really love to try. Um, but uh, don't, don't, there's no reason for that. No reason for any of that. Hell, when I was in Texas, Domino's was delivering my freaking pizza wrapped in a garbage bag. So um, that's a little extreme, but if it makes them feel better, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I got to look up and see if the FDA is compassionate use only on the hydroxychloroquine because you were having, if you were going to be prescribing it off-label prior to all this, you had to submit to the FDA for a request to use it off-label. The last I knew, I, I didn't plug my computer back in, so it's sleeping. And we all know how long it takes my laptop to wake up. But last I knew, most of these drugs were either compassionate use and you couldn't use them off-label um, without FDA approval. So, um, no, I didn't, Stephanie, because maybe I should just plug the computer back in. Um, using these drugs for their unintended purpose is taking it out of the hands of people who very, very desperately need their medication. And I do not approve of this at all. No bueno. Um, I, I just, I can't even... I don't know what the hell's happened to this country right now. They say that ventilators are actually, yeah, they are. Ventilators are actually, by the, that was one of the fights I got into, trying to keep my patient off the vent who didn't want to be ventilated. Um, but the doctor sent his resident in to talk the patient into it, which is an ethical violation, by the way, after he already made up his mind what you want doesn't matter what the patient want does and uh that's an ethics issue but yeah your death rate if you are under the age of 65 on a vent or off a ventilator is like 17 percent and when you go on a vent i think it increases around 79 under the age of 65 it's like 22 percent death rate with no ventilator and it goes up to like 97 with a vent. So you tell me what those numbers mean. Those ventilators aren't saving lives. And if they do, the quality of life is so terrible for most people, most people, that they probably wouldn't want to be alive anyway because they're going to be vent dependent. Yeah, see, it's totally not cooperating with me. There it goes. Um. Yeah, I've never hated a ventilator so much in my life as I do right now. Um, I do love working with vents normally. Not right now. If you have to go on a ventilator, it's not a very favorable outcome. It doesn't mean people won't survive, but you got to think about quality of life. Too many politicians involved in health care. Yes, 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 yes. Insurance companies should not be setting the rates. Um, they should be up to the hospital. This is this is the cost. If they have a contract with the hospital, hell yeah, you get a discount. 
you know, like a preferred provider thing, great. But they should not be doing what they're doing with healthcare costs. Um, if you have good insurance, they're more than likely going to charge your insurance company more in order to get a better reimbursement. None of that needs to be happening in healthcare. Yeah, the family can't advocate right now. They don't know what the hell's going on because they're not at that patient's bedside. And I got a big problem with that. No, that's not teaching. Thank you, my conditioner. Like, trying to get things delivered at the hotel is hit or miss right now. Even with both addresses. So I'm hoping that my purple conditioner comes tomorrow so I can darken it up a little bit. And I can quit using shampoo. Did I bore you, Kimberly? <laughs> I'm trying to say how it is. Um, yes, you need to respect your other professionals. You don't make things up. Um, what this physician tried to say that happened is not what happened, and it's documented. And it was also witnessed by several people. I don't think he realized that I was coming back to work and that I was going to talk to the people involved prior to me leaving. And uh, what he told the agency is actually really funny. And there's no proof of any of what he says. So somebody's ass is going to be in trouble and it's not me. You've been waiting two weeks. See? Shonda, been waiting two weeks for hydroxychloroquine for RA and lupus. This is bullshit. And now we have the president on TV. Talking about how it's going to save the freaking world from COVID. Not. Not going to. They've been saying that for like a couple decades, Mel. I heard that 10 years ago and 10 years prior. Um... Now is the time to demand change. And I'm going to tell you folks, you can't sit around and be quiet about what you believe in because you're not going to get this opportunity to stand up and make a difference. Like you, I mean, this is the time. You are not going to get these opportunities again if we do not stand up and demand change about everything that we feel passionately about. You are going to miss a golden opportunity and it's not going to come around again during your lifetime. So when you sit around on the sofa in 10 years and bitch that nothing's been done, you do have yourself to blame. James Chapman, he also has a criminal record. So does the Flint City Councilman. I think they all do. Um, please watch who you're voting into office, people. Please. No straight ticket votes. No, 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 no. And those are not the answer to our problems. You need to be knowledgeable about what these people, just because they're a Republican or Democrat, does not mean that what they stand for falls in line with your beliefs and value systems. You need to look. You need to be responsible enough to go, who is the best candidate for what I believe in? I'm not putting sanitizer on your chick. No, nope, 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 nope. Um, Jody, I ended my assignment due to a lot of safety reasons. You'll have to go back and listen to all the lovely things that have happened since I've been there that I've really kept my mouth shut about until I wasn't getting the PPE that I needed to do my job. I've been documenting everything every day to make a report on when I left. But when I didn't have the people, and I went to work because I was one person who gave a shit about my patients. And if I don't go to work, they suffer. So I was willing to suffer through it until I didn't have the tools to do my job. I have an egg pork roll. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> See, people who... No, I'm not talking about that, Kimberly. It can cause heart arrhythmias. So you can't just go take in mass amounts of hydroxychloroquine and it's only recommended to take for five days. And our grand president has been, uh, oh, here we are. I'm taking it. He's been taking it for 10 days. Not even recommended. That's not even the recommendation right now. Um, 
I'm, I, I seriously can't even turn the freaking volume up to listen to this shit one more time. Earlier, they were fixated on Obama, um, which he really shouldn't have opened his mouth about all that crap during a graduation speech either. Fuck. I don't want to have anything to do with those women on The View, Catherine. Those are not my crowd, not my people, not my tribe. Nope, nope, nope. What I do like, though, I was going to mention is last night I was watching, no, it was this morning, John Rich from Big and Rich, the, a, a country group. He owns a bar in Nashville, and they were the first one to open back up. But he has a TV show, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but he does interviews with people who have pursued their American dream, and they tell their story about how they got there. It's non-political. And that's what I love about him. He's like, I don't give a shit what side of the spectrum you're on. I don't care. I want real stories from real American people. And I can't, I think I'm going to have to subscribe to Fox News Nation just to watch some of the shows because they actually have a few shows that I would really consider watching because I would love to hear those kind of motivational stories. Um, but uh, I really don't want to hear anything else out of Trump's mouth anytime soon. Like, shut up already because you're making oh. yes those women are horrible and hateful I do agree I don't do the view I know there's a lot of actually I think I have to thank my fellow Michiganders for a lot of the views and the shares because uh, it seems like a lot of my followers are from Michigan and they're fed up um, I can't blame you you guys stay safe and wear your masks and socially distance from people right now. I don't care if you get made fun of. And honestly, there's a wonderful quote. It's none of your business what other people think of you. It's true. When you make it your business, you start worrying. And what are you going to do? You're not going to change their opinion. Do what makes you safe and the hell with everybody else. Every man for himself right now. Um... What people think about you really doesn't matter. It doesn't. Oh, I'm sorry. It was kind of a surprise. Um, I was waiting to... Uh, I had turned the TV on and I was waiting for the hydroxychloroquine. Um, yeah, it's being studied in nearly 200 trials. And if any of them were beneficial, <laughs> it would be moving forward with more trials. Um, they don't even tell you what part of, um, the trial that they're in. There's like certain stages to trials. Um, but this is not, this is not what we needed right now. I'm going to tell you that much. Yeah. Dr. Fauci, you need to determine whether this drug is safe and, or if it can improve, improve clinical outcomes. The only one so far that shows any benefit in improving outcomes, once again, is the remdesivir. I hope the radical protesters show up. I really do. They'll wind up getting arrested for showing up with their weapons. The Secret Service isn't going to allow that. And then they can go home and let the rest of the protesters, who actually have something valid to say show up to express their views. Yeah, see, like I said, with the z pack in that study that was retrospective with the VA, and in the France study, there's been no clinical outcomes um, that have been beneficial, and they don't even mention the z pack in one of the studies because it doesn't work. I try to do a great job. I wish I could be there for them, but honestly, I'm really happy I don't have to watch one of the patients that I fought so hard to keep alive die. Um, that was the biggest thing. I mean, I was really going to have a hard time going in to find out whether or not that man's alive or dead. Because of what happened was completely unethical. And uh, the uh, medical director tried to say that the patient coded Later on in that day, well, I had spoken to the nurse and the patient was up eating in a chair 
and doing pretty damn good. And the fellow went in there to talk him into going on a ventilator because they didn't like his respiratory rate. Never got any blood work to find out if what they seen on the monitor even matched. And there's something here called happy hypoxemics, which is what, you know, it's been in the news over and over again that these patients are showing up with abnormally low blood oxygen levels, but doing okay. And he was one of those. But I got ridiculed for bringing that up and like shame on me. I got called a stupid idiot. The nurse told me that when the doctor was rounding, what stupid idiot told you that? The stupid idiot who just like read all the freaking papers out of New York City from your counterpart pulmonology doctors um, over here who are seeing emergency patients and your ass is in the freaking office preaching when you go upstairs and not really seeing patients, um, especially in the emergency room. So please tell me again how you know about these people presenting because obviously... When I was talking about the oxidative stress and the ACE2 receptors and all that, it took them two weeks to get that information to their residents. I was bringing it up, talking to the residents, thinking that they knew about it. Nope. But because I go on rounds, even though I'm not, I'm not required to, I hear what they're telling the residents. I hear it over and over again. And none of that got brought up until about two weeks after I brought it up on video. So they're not up to date and they're not giving these people the tools that they need to do their job or the education and they're being ripped off. But to refer to somebody as a stupid idiot and then to have those people come tell me when I get to work, that's defamation of character and you're not allowed to do that. It's an ethical issue in healthcare. Um, I found it really funny, but he tried to say that that patient coded and there's, he didn't code. Um, they talked him into going on the ventilator against his will. Um, it's not what happened. So I'm really hoping that he does survive for the sake of his lovely wife. Um, but chances are probably not. I have not had one single patient that I've taken care of come off of that ventilator and walk out of that hospital since I've been there. So if the stupid idiot doctor would do his research and not put people on a ventilator until it's absolutely necessary, I think there would be a few more people alive right now. But I could be wrong. So could the doctors out in New York? We don't know because we're still dealing with this virus. But early intubation was the, that was what they were telling us in the beginning. And now they're like, don't intubate unless it's absolutely necessary because the ventilator is killing people. It is very correct. It's doing damage to the lungs. But I'm a stupid idiot for knowing that. It's okay. But don't lie and make up things like the patient went into cardiac arrest. Nope, he was up eating in the chair. The nurse told me all about your tirade and how well that the patient was doing prior to you sending your doctor in there to talk him into what he didn't want to do. Um, yeah, so you can't lie about things like that, especially when document, 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 and cover your ass. Always cover your ass with your documenting. Do not be a lazy healthcare worker. It's situations like this, and when the Joint Commission goes back, because I am going to file a complaint all the way up the chain, it's going to be a beautiful complaint. It's going to be the best complaint I've ever written because that's not ethical. Mm. Ooh. I'm just really hungry. I was not expecting a giant egg roll. They're usually smaller. I won't do that again. <laughs> yeah, don't care about what political party. Just don't even. I really wish we got rid of this two-party system. This is ridiculous. Um, both sides are trying to divide the other instead of unifying right now. 
they just had the protest here in New York City and the news media was walking down the street and people are screaming at them, calling them fake news. And just turn the freaking TV off right now. Turn it off and just do your research. Please, 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 please. Science the crap out of things. Look at, look at the facts. If somebody is on the TV who has been paid to get on there and they're telling you what you should or shouldn't do, they have a vested interest. You know, I was, speaking of the irony, I was sitting in the bed last night and I was watching Jeopardy reruns. And I'm like, man, it would be nice if like Alex Trebek or Pat Sajak could just bring the news because they're trusting. Sure as shit this morning, Pat Sajak had put something on Twitter, just like what I just said. If a person who has been paid to get on the news and give it to you, it's telling you to do something, then you can rest assured that the premise, you know, that there's some ulterior motive. And then it's, and I'm like, Pat Sajak, I was just sitting here thinking last night with one of these two and he pops up today. So seriously, you guys are awesome. Yeah, they are paid groups coming in to stir the pot. Well, I'll be coming home soon. I'm going to try to find like a four-week contract here. I do my best, and all of my coworkers know this, and I know my nurses are going to be really bummed out I'm not coming back because uh, they used to cheer when I came on the floor. Okay, so the cuff thoughts that nicotine seems to do something in the blood and cells. I have not heard anything else about that. Um, I haven't seen any research papers. Nobody's talking about it. So it's a great hypothesis, but, um, mm. schools going back in the fall, will our kids be safe? If we teach them good habits, they will. I think that the teachers are going to, our teachers do wonderful jobs with our kids. They teach them a lot of stuff. What we need to quit doing is interfering with their jobs. Do not march your ass in the classroom and tell your teacher how to do their job. Your kid is going to be wrong sometimes, and you know that. They are not perfect. They are children, and they do need to take responsibility for their actions. I've substitute teach before. Eight years I did it on and off. I know exactly what parents do. You are not the teacher. I think parents will have a whole new respect for teachers after having to homeschool their children. I got a phone call from my son today who was very upset with his stepmother. Um... And he has some emotional issues that he needs to handle. He needs to learn how to handle his emotions. And I was trying to talk him through those moments, but Dad said that he needed to go, and that was fine because they were trying to handle the situation. I wasn't going to add to that problem, but I think parents will have a whole new respect for their children's teacher this year, and they will be more than happy to let them do their job after having to be teacher. So let our teachers teach. And I got a very good, and when they ask you to send freaking sanitary wipes to school this year, I don't want to see a bunch of shit on Facebook about it, okay? I want you to send that woman some freaking sanitary wipes and some hand sanitizer for the kids, okay? That's what I want to see. I see so many posts in the fall about your tax dollars this and your tax dollars that. If That's where all that shit was going prior to y'all bitching about it. Send the teacher some sanitary wipes. If she's asking for help, she needs it. It's not in the damn budget. They barely get paid. I have a couple cousins who are teachers. Come on. Help them out. No, I'm not in Atlantic City. I'm in Newark. I don't even want to go visit Atlantic City. It doesn't look very clean. Um, I would have Valerie if I would have seen him. What I almost did, um, what, well, I'm going to tell you what I did do. All the articles from the pulmonary doctors and anesthesiology magazines, all that stuff, British Journal of Anesthesia, I went and printed off all those things. And then I walked up to the poor residents who were upstairs, one of whom was in attendance of, um, some of this, but I handed it to her and I'm like, 
there is such thing as happy hypoxemia. We see it with the high altitude sickness, which is where all this high altitude sickness ideology was coming from. But I'm like, read through the message board because there's residents who have talked about things and the doctors are responding. But all of these, a, a, a palm crit and M crit, they're from um, New York City. And the one guy is an emergency medicine and critical care doctor. And he has all sorts of podcasts and everything. And he's right in the midst of all this shit. So he's got a website. And there's also pulmonary critical care medicine, which is what I do. Um, but understanding all of it. And I had to, there's a formula when you're making ventilator adjustments on how to adjust things for a proper a carbon dioxide and his residents didn't even know how to do that because I day after day I would follow in rounds and they would be talking to the residents how they need to make adjustments either with the respiratory rate or the volume of air to make sure that the carbon dioxide levels don't rise and I had a CO2 of like 90 one day which is double what it should have been and I looked at the ventilator settings from the previous night and they made vent settings and didn't compensate for the CO2. So they don't understand what they are doing. And the only way to teach them is to talk to them about what they're doing wrong. So he didn't, I had pulled open my respiratory calculator because I'm going to tell you what, when you're in the middle of crap and you're trying to do math, math never works in your favor. So it's nice to have just an app that does it for you and you can just punch in the numbers. And he was like, what is that? I need that. So I gave him the information. But what I also did was I got down and I wrote down on a nice piece of paper what the formulas were. So he knew what they were and I gave them to him. Because that's how you teach. You don't intimidate. You don't ask them how stupid they are or why don't you know this? Well, they don't know it because of how you're trying to teach them. It'd be like trying to teach a child and ridiculing them for how stupid they are. These guys are residents. They are learning from you. That's not, the, that's the behavior that they're going to remember and not teach other doctors who that they have under them after they get out in their specialties. Because these doctors aren't all staying in critical care. Some are going to be neurologists, neurosurgeons, family medicine, all sorts of different things. Most of them aren't staying in critical care, so they don't know these things. I know my shit because that's what I do, ventilators, and I know the rest of the body and how it works, but I gave them this stack. What I almost did before I left was uh, put these in his mailbox, some light reading from the stupid idiot, but I resisted because people like that aren't going to learn. Um, you just deal with it and you use it as a teachable moment but I did go upstairs and show the residents I'm like here's the literature that you need to read this is what I was talking about and I'm sure as you read through it it will make sense and a lot of it will sound familiar with the patients that we have showing up in the hospital that's what I did is I educated the new doctors with the information because that is where the benefit is going to lie so yeah you don't teach that way Mm, head start. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. One nation under God, like indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Um, Indivisible. We seem pretty fucking divided right now. I'm over it. Yeah, I would advocate for some kind of, like I said, the a peroxide foggers, the UV zapper is great. I mean... If the parents all come together and do like a GoFundMe, you, you guys can come up with the money to get that. And the zapper is really great. It's really great. I ended my contract due to patient safety reasons and safety for my own health, Sean. You'll have to go back and watch the video because it's pretty lengthy. I mean, I have like two and a half pages of notes so far that I got to type up for my agency. If your husband is coughing and having to use his inhaler every six hours, then he needs to go see the doctor. I would be making a phone call because that's too much. It's probably allergies. Um, I don't know if he's on anything like Singular or um, a maintenance medication like Advair or Symbicor, an inhaled corticosteroid. Um, it sounds like 
he needs some asthma management and it's not managing your it's not managed if you are using a rescue inhaler like that um yeah <laughs> two packs a day you're a shithead um just watched a commercial for wrongful COVID-19 deaths. Are you freaking kidding me right now? We haven't even got through the first wave of deaths and we're already great. I'm sure they're going to be contributed to hydroxychloroquine next. Great. Just, just great. Oh my God. Do you still have as many COVID patients? I don't know. I am not there anymore. I'm waiting for a new assignment. Um, I had let them know Friday when I got to work, I got a hold of my recruiter and uh, told her that this wasn't going to work out no more because I'm not going to take care of patients with one cheap plastic gown that I would rip to show you, but I might need this because PPE is invaluable. Um, but I was reading the, you'll have to go back through and uh, read the detail or listen to the details. I was going to do, I sat out in the parking lot crying. I sat outside staring at that hospital Friday night and uh, I was listening to Z-Dogs Lose Yourself about not letting the system break you. And that was the only thing that caught that, that kept me from walking out that door that night. Um, I wasn't going to abandon my patients, but I also needed to, I'm, I'm glad I did go because I got the information that I needed from the staff about what went down. Um, with this doctor who is a so-called medical director. Um, you don't scream at people. You don't flip out and call people stupid idiots. You know, maybe you should have talked to me. Um, the director who was supposed to call me never heard anything. Um, so that's unprofessional. That is completely unprofessional. It's unethical. It is defamation and it was all lies um to cover somebody else's ass and it wasn't mine because I document everything and um it's well documented that this patient did not go into cardiac arrest which is what they told my agency like really um I've got two other nurses that say yeah I don't think so I took care of that patient and there was no cardiac arrest that happened and I also talked to one of the doctors the residents. So yeah, um, I don't think he expected that I was going to come back to work that night and find all this out. Um, I guess he expected I wasn't going to show up or I was going to be told not to come back that day. But a uh, good thing I did because uh, I covered my ass and I got my information that I needed and I know who to contact now. And my agency ain't buying any of it. Um, once they heard what had really happened, which was a complete opposite of the whole story I got when I got to work that night. Um, yeah. And then I had been pushing for the proper PPE all week. So it was more just like, we're going to retaliate because she won't shut up because she's, you know, here on Facebook with all these followers now. Um, but now we're going to look bad. So now the truth's on the table. Um, I'm not going to stand for that. And like I said, this is the only facility that I have ever worked at that I have had an issue like this. I got along with the doctors great at UMC, and they're trauma doctors. They know their shit. Um, they, they, they know their ventilators, and they trust that when I go to them and go, hey, this is the case, and blah, 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 can I do this? They're like, yeah, go ahead. Because you have that mutual respect with the, with the staff. We're not just tank jockeys is what they used to call us that we used to carry around oxygen tanks well we're highly educated individuals now who know respiratory um we know our ventilators and you know i would try to teach the residents about the ventilator instead of having them fear it or fear the person who's teaching them um i went in that night and all the patients i had had the night before i had again and every one of them sedation was cut they have heart rates like in the 140s. They're breathing like 40 to 50 times a minute. And I'm like, isn't this the problem that you were trying to solve with the patient that you forced to go on the ventilator? Um, he was doing the same thing without a vent. And now you got all these people not sedated doing it too. That's freaking great. Um, and the residents were all afraid to give sedation because they didn't want to get yelled at. 
And I'm like, I know, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. There's no right answer when it comes to... And it's only one attending, um, just one. The other one was a very good educator. So thank God they were only stuck with this asshole one day a week. I'm going to try to stay here in New Jersey. I am renewing my Michigan license. And, uh, yeah, see, we were getting the surgical gowns, Kelly, but I only, I was supposed to use that one gown for the entire shift for every patient. And I read the hospital's regulations when it came to PPE. And, like, my N95 is once per shift, you know, and not one per month. Um, yeah, that's not safe. And at least the other hospitals, like I said, that the one I was at in Texas, in El Paso, they were saving our used masks and sterilizing them. They weren't making us reuse them. They were saving them in case there was ever a shortage to where we couldn't get a hold of them, that we could still have something to supply the staff with. Very smart move. Very well thought out. Very well planned ahead. They came up with a plan. They executed it. And they made changes to the process. You know, it's process improvement. That's what you do is quality processes. And they were very efficient at what they do. Um, our department, we ran our own blood gas lab. The ladies who managed that were on the ball. Um, everybody was on top of their game. And I'm used to that. I And it's not, you know, every hospital, you know, I go to like, oh, you have such great ideas. This is a poor hospital. I'm like, you know, I heard that at the last place and they still had X, X, and X. They made it work. Um, but this place really had nothing. We were proning patients and the residents came, you know, they were on the ball with how we were flipping patients over manually because we don't have any beds. We only had two negative pressure rooms and like four portable units to exhaust or exchange the air and everybody was COVID. So you only had <laughs> maybe 10 rooms you could put people in, but they were all full and the air wasn't being exchanged. And I mean, it's just not safe. The doors don't latch all the way. Um, lots of equipment, oxygen tanks laying <laughs> next to the crash cart, like stacked up five or six deep. Those are guided missiles. You have to secure the oxygen tank. You can't just leave it laying around a room. You're not allowed to transport an O2 tank on a patient bed. It has to be secure. And it has to be secure because it can become a guided missile if it falls over and that top breaks off. Um, so, yeah, things like that. I mean, just very blatant joint commission violations. I mean, needles sticking out of the top of containers because they're not being changed. You know, not cleaning a patient's room properly. You know, it's just cross-contamination. You know, I'm not going to get sick. No. And I'm not going to allow somebody else to get sick. Yeah, it's very lengthy, guys. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to get here. I'm going to finish up in Jersey. I got to send in. I got to send my dad. I don't have any checks. I don't written a check in fucking years um so i gotta send my dad my michigan application to mail in for me so he can mail a check he's really good at checks and money orders i am not i'm great with my debit card but the state of michigan is archaic so i'm gonna renew my license there um i got my jersey license illinois texas um louisiana i filed for north carolina I got Washington, so there's a lot of places I can go. I got a lot of freaking licenses. And people wonder about my credentials. Jesus Christ. So I'm going to chase COVID, but I, I, I'm going to try to take like a short assignment here before I go get my son and go on a nice lengthy vacation of I'm not doing a damn thing for a few weeks, except for maybe starting to create some t-shirts and sweatshirts. But um, there's a lot of things I would love to do, and I guess right now I can do them because I have a free moment to think for myself. Um, it's always a learning experience, and I try to use these shitty experiences to learn from. Um, so I'm not upset. I'm, you know, offended, but not upset because I did take something away from this, and I did learn a lot. And I also learned a lot about how important it is to speak up when something is wrong. Um, I don't care about money. 
I am not a money hungry person. You ask my husband though, he'll tell you that. Um, funny, I don't want for much. Same behavior our current president tends to display. Yeah, I don't really know what the fuck is going on right now. Yeah, some folks shouldn't be in healthcare. You are correct. You are correct. Minnesota, San Antonio. You know, I would love to come back to San Antonio before July. You guys, my hair would be this big. I would look like freaking Carrot Top with purple hair. It's very curly, but I love the river walk there. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, these next few weeks are going to be really busy. No, I do not want to come to California. Uh-uh, Cali's not my style, not my speed. Nope. No, and y'all have freaking earthquakes, and we're having, like, major problems with weather lately. There was, you know, we had a few earthquakes in Texas a few months back. Um, the one was felt in El Paso, and we're right on fault lines. So, no, I, I'm not a fan of Cali. I'm just not. It's not my kind of, um, not my kind of environment. Like the remote backwoods of Oregon and Montana, Alaska. Those are my type of neighborhoods. <laughs> Nowhereville, Michigan. Um, yeah. But uh, California, no. They've offered me several positions and I've turned them down. Yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm originally from Michigan. Michigan born and raised. I can't wait to come home for some Superman ice cream and a Coney dog. Although maybe I'll travel out to Coney Island here in New York because they're reopening that now. So it'd be nice to experience a Coney dog on Coney Island. I got a few days. No, I'm not coming. <laughs> you guys don't even have an ICU, Amy. <laughs> there is no intensive care unit in Gladwin. Maybe Midland. But not glad when actually I was offered a place uh, a position in Mount Pleasant back at the hospital that I was at working. They were looking for a traveler, but that's the place that only had two RTs on staff. Um, and I've already been there, so I'm trying to go places I haven't been so I can experience the United States. That's kind of why I wanted to travel. I would like to stay out here a little bit longer while things are opening up so I can travel and check stuff out. And it's supposed to be rainy all freaking week, so I ain't going anywhere right now. I That's one thing. I have a lot of integrity. I have a lot of integrity. So when somebody tries to assassinate my character, like my husband did, I fight back. And uh, actually, now I can work on my thank you video for you guys. I can do that tonight because I got all this... <laughs> What I'm doing is I'm taking all the screenshots from all the messages I got from that video, which I have like 210 screenshots. Thank you guys. <laughs> that was a lot of work today. <laughs> but I'm going to put them all in a video with a message for you guys. But the one thing that caused me to start speaking up was the stalker lady who harassed me about my purple hair and to shut up because nobody was listening. Really? Looks like nobody's listening now. Um, so I'm going to share that message with you guys. And uh, with a little thank you in the beginning. And I got to find, I have to see what music I can add to it if it comes with it or if I need to I purchase a song. But uh, so I'm going to put that all together. It's probably going to be pretty long because there's a lot of freaking messages that you guys sent. <laughs> Michigan is flooding. Yeah, it's time to travel in a canoe in Michigan. It is May. I think last May it rained for 28 out of 31 days and ruined the corn crops. Come to Chicago or you can be... You know, I did. I do have my Illinois license and I thought about coming to Chicago because then I could take off to go over to Michigan. It's only a five-hour drive to see my kids. So I did think about that because I would love to go to the hood in Chicago. Um I was already in the murder capital of, you know, the United States for a few years. Um, keeps me on my toes. It's the kind of chaos that I like. I don't know. Cannabis is not reducing anything but the firefighters' lives out in freaking uh, California. 
Um, the, if I'm going to tell you right now, if all these drugs and everything that we're doing isn't helping with COVID, it pot ain't going to solve this problem. It might help reduce some of the inflammation associated with it, but so would all the anti-inflammatory drugs that we're giving people steroids and everything else that they're doing. So no, I, I, I don't, I don't believe it. Yeah, I had to replant the garden. Most of the time, it just floats away in Michigan right now. You have to plant it above ground, like on a hill, so the water runs <laughs> down. <laughs> or in a raised bed. Um, this is a bad month for Michigan. You know, it used to be April showers bring May flowers, and now it's not like that. It's June flowers and May floods. Where was this at, Sean, that you were replying to Christine? In certain areas, police had to break it up, mostly young adults who think they're invincible. Yes, Tracy, I cut my contract short, and you'll have to go back and watch part of the video. To, um, there's a lot of stuff going on with this place. It's terrible. Hi, Heather. Um, but needless to say, there's a lot of safety violations and Jayco violate or joint commission. We don't call them Jayco anymore, but, um, it was not safe. Um, not safe. And it was very, very disheartening. Um, I'm pretty disgusted with what I experienced out here at, at, at this one facility. Um, from what I'm talking to other people out here, it's not like this everywhere. Um, so I have no reason to expect that anywhere else I go is going to have this substandard level of care and respect for their patients. And I'm sure that maybe housekeeping might do their damn jobs. Four and a quarter inches of rain. Damn. Uh, Sheila, yeah, we always worry if we're going to catch it. But honestly, if I have my PPE that I'm supposed to have to do my job, I don't worry so much. Um, I don't think I'm going to worry any more than I would catching tuberculosis and in Texas and especially in the El Paso area um there are a lot of where the hell was this violent block party I have no idea where Volusia County is how about giving us a city I'm just looking at all this freaking chaos Maui tourist wanted by police for resisting lockdown. Folks, come on. Please, like, just freaking stop. I do like this bar and grill that gave people inner tubes with a table to walk around with. That way people can't <laughs> get into your personal space. And then when you get drunk, you can just play bumper cars. Um, like, make it fun. They have social distance circles at the park out in New York. Um, we don't need to be reminded to stay away from each other. I mean, really, this is come together for one purpose. Unite. Quit putting people on sides of political spectrums because nobody wants to be labeled anything right now. They don't want to be labeled a Democrat. They don't want to be labeled a Republican. They want to be a freaking human being without a label and able to make their own informed choices. And that's what you, unite, unity, right now, unity. Because there has to be some kind of rational thought in all of this. I just don't even know. Um, I'm just disgusted and Trump just needs to shut up right now. I'm thoroughly embarrassed about this. There's been no good evidence that this drug is doing anything for anything other than what it's been prescribed for for years. Um, I don't even know what to say. Squirrel, yeah. I am over the world at this point. Yes, I am too. I am done, 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 done. Um, I just, I'm going to work on my video and my very, very long email, but my hand gets tired from typing all the time because I do it all the time at work and now I got this long ass email to type up for the agency and then I got to get on the joint commission website and file a complaint there. That's going to take forever. Um, lots of crap. I've never had to file a complaint against a hospital before. This ought to be interesting. Um, I've never had this really bad experience with a hospital before. 
ever. I mean, this is just um, pretty disgusting. I'm very disgusted with this experience, but I was here and put there for a reason, and that reason is to advocate for the people who couldn't advocate for themselves. And uh, I don't even sweat it. I really don't. Um, it was an experience, and it was there, for, you know, it was there for a learning experience and a teachable moment. And uh, it put me in line to do this, and it is what it is. So um, there are plenty of other positions out there right now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sweat it. Um, I'm a good therapist. I know what I'm doing and I know when something is wrong and I'm not just going to lay down and shut up or go take a nap in the department while a ventilator shuts down. <sighs> Ventilators don't quit very often, but when you're sleeping is not a good time for that to happen. I'm sure there was a few phone calls made about that because the nursing supervisor was asking me about it when I left. Oh, you guys are welcome. I haven't had any CF patients. Right ventricle enlargement, a major predictor for mortality when COVID. It's probably because of pulmonary hypertension and then the blood backing up is thick and you are at more risk for clots. This is a nightmare when it comes to the blood, period. So high blood pressure of any kind or hypertension of any kind is gonna put you at a higher risk for mortality with COVID, period. Um, let's see, big hugs take 10 tonight. Oh, I've been sleeping like for two days and it was great. So I was like really well rested to go back to work tonight, but I was really happy to find out I didn't have to. Um, I had, like I said, I had messaged my recruiter Friday night when I got to work, a very lengthy email. Um, they didn't even know I was there because it took me so long to type up the email. <laughs> and then I added to it this morning when I sent in my time card with all the other information that I found out after I got up to the ICU unit and talked to the nursing staff. So, um, I feel bad for the staff because they're just very stressed out and they are going to start filing complaints because they're over it too. Um, they're over people not doing their job and them having to do all of it. And that's not fair to the nurses. They were wonderful women. And actually they were all women. I don't think I had any male nurses up there. That's really weird. I've worked with a lot of male nurses. Um, well, the only male nurse we had was on a ventilator and died. So that wasn't good. But um, please just behave. Turn the news off. It's depressing and sad, and this country's going to hell in a handbasket, and we might as well just not put any more gas on the dumpster fire that's going on in the United States right now. Get out there and work together. That's all I can tell you. Quit trying to divide this country. I don't want to see any more political freaking statements on my posts. I will start deleting them. I'm not going to deal with it. We're not going to lay blame. We're going to go forward and do something about it. Quit trying to point fingers and blame. And that's what the problem really honestly right now is everybody wants to lash out the anger that they have onto somebody or something. They want somebody to bitch at, to complain to, instead of being a solution. So... If somebody's cranky and crabby with you, then they need to lay their anger where it should lie. And that is with our leaders who are failing miserably. Do something about it. Shut up and do something. Do not accept this. If you have a problem with it, peacefully protest and do something about it. Do not add to the freaking dumpster fire that is going on this television right now. Don't. Be nice, be nice, be nice. My dad always used to say, be good, be kind, be nice, be careful every time we left the house. And he's right. Oh, my God. I can't take any more of this news. Yes, all it takes is one to stand up. Um, I've been standing up for a lot, but I'm okay with that. 
I got some strong shoulders and I have some wonderful people with lovely words. I mean, out of all those messages that were sent to me, I had a few people who stole some profiles and were trying to create a romantic relationship from overseas, I guess, and like three haters. And one of them, I wound up messaging and her and I became friends. So really out of all those messages and the 210 screenshots that I did were not all of the messages that I got. Some of them were questions and stuff like that, and I wasn't going to include, you know, really private details in those. So um, I'd say there was about a total of 300. I mean, no, I had to go back through a lot of messages. <laughs> and then my hand is sore, but it's worth it. Someone has MS and her doctor told her she was in high risk for severe symptoms if she were to get COVID. Um, depends on how... I guess if the body is really affected with the MS to a certain degree, yeah, but I haven't seen like any particular studies. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, it would mess with the body's ability to fight like muscle wise, because if they have a lot of complications from it, I can imagine it'd be really hard to breathe. Um, oh, thank you, Judy. I try. I really try. F the haters. Yeah, screw the haters. Screw the haters. And screw the guy who wanted to call me a stupid idiot. What a great doctor. I am going to rest tonight. I'll probably... I'm a RT, Kelly. RRT. Um, hopefully soon I'll have the ACCS credential behind my name as well. I was actually... Looking into ordering that today, I don't even know what happened to me Google searching the material from the Oaks Academy. Oh, I think I had to, oh, I was waiting for my login that never came in the email. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I need to log in and get that so I can study for that exam. Um, you kind of forget all the formulas when you use a calculator and you're not doing math all the time because respiratory is a lot of math but I really do know my job to the point where I really don't doubt my judgment anymore a lot of fresh RTs out of school I mean I don't want to say a lot all of the respiratory therapists out of school are like oh my god we don't feel prepared for this we are not ready for this oh my god oh my god oh my god and when you're doing it for so long you just know you just know your job um but there's all these wonderful protocols and things that the MBRC follows that you have to retrain your brain to remember because we don't use them. We always said in school in the NBRC hospital. <laughs> and when I went to take my NBRC exam, apparently the NBRC hospital had changed some of their damn rules and they didn't inform us. So we were studying all the wrong values and they changed their guidelines. So it was, <laughs> it was real fun. We're going, oh shit, what's this? The squirrel happened. I just, I am so over society right now. All right, well, I'm going to log off here. I think I've talked enough, but that's what's going on. And that is why I am changing facilities. Um, not going to deal with shitty patient care and poor administration. Um, I have too much integrity to even screw around with that, so... I'll find out more this week on where I'm going to go. I'd like to stay with my same agency because I really like the people that I've been working with. They're really um, a good agency because one of the other very popular agencies, AYA, uh, screwed a lot of people under contracts. And uh, that's kind of what happened to me up in Seattle, and I refused to work with these people again. So I'd like to stay with who I'm working with. And uh, they're very great people. They're out of Florida, Jackson Therapy. They are fantastic folks, and they really look out for their employees, and uh, they've done everything that they can, and that's why, you know, she spent an hour with me on the phone tonight listening to my concerns. So, you know, when she gets my email, she'll understand why. Um, I had to go back through all of my notes that I create and leave for myself so I could document it all, like, by date and <laughs> violation, so... Yay, I need to stay organized better instead of just cramming notes into my bag and having to dig back through them and uncrinkle them and need a better filing system. 
<laughs> How do you check to see if someone is a doctor or nurse? Yeah, that's the LARA, L-A-R-A. -A. It's the licensing and regulation agency in Michigan that does all the credentialing, and you can verify licenses through LARA. Just do, you can even Google Michigan LARA and verify a license. Um, and you should be able to pull it right up by name. Um, and it'll pop up and let you know if it's suspended, if there's been any sanctions. Um, you can look all that up. It's all there. Very, very easy. If you have a hard time finding it, just shoot me a message and I'll send you the link. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Um, I'll probably go live tomorrow just for the people who might have missed it tonight. And I'll just kind of fill you all in on anything else that I find out. Um, till then, I'm just going to kind of hang tight out here. And uh, like I said, I want to take another short-term assignment while I'm out here. There's a few places like LTACs, and I really like the long-term facilities too because I like to see people succeed. I like all aspects of respiratory care. So wherever the road takes me, I'll let you know though. You guys have a good night. Yeah, Laura, yep. It says they're saving lives and I can't verify them to be a doctor. Oh, I'll help you. <laughs> I will help you. Just shoot me a message, honey. You guys have a good night.